Let's talk about the unseen. What is the unseen? The unseen is anything that you experience that cannot be seen by either you or other people. Or it can be seen by you, but nobody else witnesses it. Or it might be experienced by others as well, but it has no physical manifestation and so remains unseen, only felt. How do we describe things that we have witnessed personally, remembering that sometimes these things can be unseen by others? If you're describing physical events taking place that can be seen by other people, it's really easy to describe because we call the things what they are. For example, someone could say, I went to a party last night. There were about 30 people there. The house had three bedrooms, a kitchen, a living room, two bathrooms. We drank various refreshments. Everyone was wearing their best clothes. A man was wearing a blue shirt, and he got into an argument, a verbal argument, with a girl wearing a blue dress. Someone knocked over the drinks on the table and caused a terrible mess, staining the carpet, which caused the hostess to freak out and start crying. A couple of lads who heard her crying came into the room and started acting all tough and white knightish, threatening to sort out whoever kicked the drinks over, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Physical things that are manifest into reality are extremely easy to describe to people because the frames of reference are always either the same or very similar and we all speak the same language. But let's not forget that the police do actually acknowledge that eyewitness testimonies are not very reliable. You could have 10 people go to a party that takes place in one room where everybody sat around one table and for the entire night they are all sat around one table. The next day, you will have 10 different accounts of what happened, 10 different perceptions of what happened. Now, let's think about the unseen. The party being described was unseen by any of you listening now. It wasn't a real event, but let's just play a thought game that it was for the purpose of this exercise. The events were unseen, but the things being described were easy to describe because our frames of reference are the same. What about the other type of unseen? Feelings. We can describe how we think or feel or how other people are thinking and feeling. And often we're correct, but sometimes we're not because the signs are generally very easy to read. If someone's happy and joyful, people can tell because they're smiling and laughing. If someone was angry, it's the same. We can see they scowl and they growl and they, they look all mean. We may not know why they're happy or joyful or angry, but we can tell that that is how they're feeling because of the expression on their face or the tone of their voice. What about unnatural feelings? I mean the spooky feelings, ominous feelings, fear, etc., we can describe them, but how do we describe where they came from or why we are experiencing them? What about feelings of mistrust? What about when the feelings have no real cause? Say, a woman feels that her man has been looking at other women but has never witnessed it. But she feels strongly that he is doing it. What about when a man feels the same about his woman looking at other men or sleeping with another person? How do you describe those feelings to anyone if there has been no actual infidelity? Let's go back to the party, but let's have a little closer look. The man and the woman who were arguing. The man was defending himself because the woman was accusing him of having unclean thoughts about the hostess and she was certain that they were having an affair. The woman was certain that this was the case because of the feeling that she had. Her thoughts were flooded with images of the man and the hostess together in one of the bedrooms while the girl was being sick in the bathroom. She was sure that she had seen glances being made between the two of them and in her mind, her guardian angel was warning her that this man was a dog. 
she would never disclose this to her man because she knew that he didn't believe in guardian angels and would just say she was a paranoid schizo who heard voices all the time. She would describe it to her bestie, though, and when she describes it to her bestie, her bestie listens to what she has to say and then explains to her that perhaps it wasn't her guardian angel. Her bestie believes in entities and suggests that because they had both been drinking, a dark, mischievous entity had messed around with her, putting these thoughts in her head. This entity was called a djinn. Can you see what's happened here? Three different ideas about what has happened, coming from three different perspectives and three different perspe perceptions, giving three different explanations, all talking about things that were unseen by anyone. How do you think that works when it comes to paranormal events, spiritual experiences, things that are unseen by anyone and only felt, or they are seen by someone, but not by anyone else. Especially, what about when something happens when other people are around, but they just don't see what you saw? Because you saw something that was totally outside of the parameters of our supposed reality. We can only describe things according to our own experience programming and indoctrination we can only use the frames of reference that we have built up ourselves during our lives what we are describing is unseen paranormal does not happen in a physical reality according to science so it cannot be proven to anyone there are no receipts we are relying 100 percent on our own frames of reference to describe things that are ridiculous to a society that believes science is the ultimate authority and what we were taught in school was the truth. The unseen is whatever you make it. Your perception is the filter through which you will experience the unseen. They've known this for time immemorial and they are using it to their full advantage. They've written the baseline for our understanding of their reality. We are not living our own reality right now. We are living the reality that they want us to manifest through our perception. They own our perception through the education, through Hollywood, and through the media. They wrote the program to ensure that we have no authority over our experience, and they have compromised our free will using our own perception. Don't you think it's time you cleared your vision, wiped the dirt away from your perception, and saw life in a more accurate way? with authority over your own experience. Take control of your own perception and stop relying on the faulty perception given to us by those who want to control us and remove our free will. All you need to do that is data. Start reading, expand your mind and open your heart. Oh, and I would suggest very, very strongly that the whole time you do this, you do it with humility and you recognize the power that is responsible for your even being here and being able to have this experience, the creator or creators, whatever or whoever they may be. Let's get into some 007 stuff. Mm. 